Our next inductee started this Hall of Fame. So tonight, your plan has finally arrived. <laughs> to introduce him is another great athlete from the Altieri family. Mark Altieri, a man who played second base. And I, I, I know when Glenn Golf used to do his highlights, would call him by his nickname with the team, E4. <laughs> so, oh, that was me. And, and I'd also like to thank Mark for letting me use his glasses tonight. We're sharing glasses. I, does this mean we're going steady? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Altieri. All right. <clears throat> Thanks, Mo. Okay. Uh, just for an update, uh, Coach Babcock couldn't make it tonight because he had his wrestling team in the Class D finals down in Sandy Creek. And I'm sure you're glad to know that Peter Winkler. Ben Fields and Nell Altieri made it to the sectionals. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests and families, Hall of Fame Athletic Committee, wherever they are, and Hall of Fame members, I'm here to present to you my younger brother, Paul, as one of IHC's 2015 Hall of Fame inductees. I know that Paul is honored to be inducted in the class of some pretty classy athletes. Darcy Rowe at the time is an exemplary rep representative of the women athletes from IHC. Graham Wise, who had single-handedly redrew the grade line in playing lacrosse. Christian Spicer, apex of IHC quarterbacks, and the girls' basketball team, a once-in-a-lifetime culmination of a group of young ladies diverging on the high school sports world, every coach's dream, IHC's own dream team. So let's get to Paul. Before I do, I'd like to thank Bomber and Sock, Paul's, two of Paul's close friends, for nominating him. Before you label Paul as a baseball or football star or even a coach, I would like you to observe a true athlete, and I'm glad Matt brought that up earlier. I thought you did a very good job of that. Born of an immigrant father, Augie, and that's a bit cliche, isn't it, but it's true, from Morolo, Italy, who married a baker's daughter, Ida Spaziani. You know, there seems to be an athletic strain in the Spaziani's DNA. For Ida, her sisters Rosalind and Marianne, and her brother Silverio, would produce five Graf slash Gaffney Award winners. Arguably, Paul should have been the first in the family to win it, but he didn't. His cousin Lenny holds that honor. More on that later. The fourth of four sons, his three older brothers, John, Mike, and myself, always pushed his limits, and he always responded with his God-gifted talent. So what kind of athlete are we talking about? There isn't a sport he couldn't play. If you can name one, it's probably because he never tried it. In 1978, he entered the freshman class as a 13-year-old. So he played his last Pop Warner season quarterbacking his team to the finals. 
In the winter season, he was, me he was a member of the last wrestling team IHC had. It would be ri revived years later. He also played freshman basketball. Now you may ask me, how is that possible? Back then, you did it. You could do it. So he's playing freshman basketball and wrestling for IHC. So that meant that four days of the week he was doing basketball practice. Maybe one day Benach would get him for wrestling. Friday afternoon he's playing a basketball game and Saturday morning he's on the mats. In the spring of 79 he played JV lacrosse. Yes, lacrosse, not baseball, not yet. We'll get into that later. Sophomore year of 79, he found himself under center again, meaning he was the quarterback and captain of IHC's JV football team. They went 7-1. and one. And that team was on to greater things. That winter, his only choice was basketball. So he's back at point guard. This is where he learned about a disease called Osgood Schlatter's. And if you don't know what that is, it's a swelling of the knee joints. It hit him hard and only affected him on hard courts, not on the field. It would take him several years to grow out of it. That spring in 1980, he went back on the lacrosse team. And, as, and on the JV team, he was captain and led the team in goals and assists. The falls of 1980 and 81, his junior and senior years, he was back on the gridiron, but moved to wide receiver. Both these years in football, IHC was Frontier League champions. He captained his senior year. He was a Frontier, frontier League All-Star both years. Both years All-North selection. He broke the single game receiving yards record, a record now being held by his son Vincenzo, who's a sophomore. He was ranked fourth in career receiving yards and receptions at the time of graduation. At one point, he held three of the top ten single game receiving yards, and he only played two years of varsity football. The 1980 team was the first IHC team to go to the Dome, and in 81, they repeated that. Both years, they went undefeated, only to lose both times at the Dome. Because of the elimination of wrestling, Paul's only option was basketball. And because of his knee condition, he could not play sports in the, that sport in the 80 and 81 seasons. I'll get there. Did that cost him the Graff Award? Arguably, yes. They eventually changed the requirements. Spring seasons of 81 and 82, and here comes baseball. He was an 81 and 82 Frontier League All-Star, and he captained the 82 Frontier League Championship team. In college, he went on to play football and baseball at Ithaca. He played ice hockey, lacrosse, and baseball at Lemoyne. He won the scoring title in the Ithaca College Floor Hockey League. <laughs> he won the Lemoyne College Ping Pong Championship. <laughs> now after college is when most athletes leave organized sports and settle into something like racquetball. but not Paul. He accepted an invitation for tryouts on the U.S. Olympic baseball team that was held in Memphis, Tennessee. 
He played baseball for the Syracuse Northmen, and then he reintroduced semi-pro baseball in Watertown, forming the Watertown Athletics. He fought in the Golden Gloves. In handball, did I mention handball yet? He won championships in Syracuse, Rochester, Buffalo, Albany. Thanks to me, the Ontario Doubles Championships, <laughs> New York State Championships, and the Northeast Regional Championships. I'm glad I numbered these. Locally, he was part of the city street hockey championships. The city bocce champions and numerous other slow pitch softball league championships. And then he started his own fast pitch softball team. And in the first year we went to the finals. He made it to the finals in the city tennis league. And he did that while wearing a cast on his arm. He bought a couple of hundred acres of land in the Adirondacks to form our hunting club, to which fellow member, and unfortunately he couldn't be here, Lello Altieri belongs. And Lello is a Hall of Famer at IHC. And, and looking at his picture right now, you're being Christian for the biggest head. <laughs> And we already have, <laughs> and we are, and we already have a picture of Lolo at camp. <laughs> camp won't be bearable now with those two. He coached IHC baseball, basketball, hockey, and of course football for over 17 years. Sackett's Harbor baseball for three years which he brought that team into the finals for the first time in many years. When JCC was on the verge of eliminating baseball, believe it or not, it was Al Smith who brought it back to life when his influence saw to it to bring Paul Altieri in as manager to revitalize the program. He spent 13 years there. At his apex, he brought the team to the JUCO finally four, final four. And I think that was the first time JCC's ever been there. Thank you. He also has the winningest record for coaching baseball at JCC. And mind you, 13 years Believe me, those first few years were rough ones. We started with nothing. He started with nothing. I was glad to be along for the ride. He had offers to coach at the University of Pittsburgh and Georgetown. He left JCC to coach his kids back at IHC. Before I give you Paul, I would like to introduce his real heart and soul. His wife, Adrian. Thank you. His daughter, Kiata, who was another IHC student athlete. His son, Santino, who was a Gaffney Award winner an all-league, an all-north, and David's going to help me out. Where is he? Where's David Renzi? Okay. Yeah, he would be. And I'm mentioning David because he promised he would mention me. And he's also going to mention what, uh, something else Santino is <laughs> proud to be part of. His daughter, Elena, like the rest of his kids. Is, 
as a, as a multi-athlete and student at IHC. And she's in the middle of basketball right now, right? You're winding down? Not a girl. And his son, Chenzo, who this past football season was an all-North and an all-State. As a sophomore. How'd it go, kid? And his best sport is baseball. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to give you <laughs> It's a tough one, Mel. My best friend, my confidant, and the best athlete I know. Paul Altieri. Where's Dave Jebo? Really? <laughs> Best I can do. <laughs> Christian, I'll gr gladly give you that honor. Um, and I never did drugs. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm proud to be standing up here representing IHC and its athletic program. Mark, thank you. You played a big role in all that you just said about me. You were my coach, my advisor throughout my IHC years, and much of my success is a result of your influence. Thanks, brother. Thank you to Mel as well. Mel has done a great job covering athletics at IHC over the years. He's an IHC alum, a loyal fan, and a good friend. I'd also like to thank my good friends Ricky Sock Doe and Tim Bomber Cohane for nominating me for the hall. And hold your applause. I'll deal with them later. Hold your applause. And I'd also like to thank the Hall of Fame committee for voting me in. Congratulations to Darcy, Graham, Christian, 2002 girls team for your induction tonight. Having taught or coached you at IHC years ago, I can say that you being honored here tonight is well deserved. I'm proud to say that I've either taught or coached quite a few of your family and friends in the crowd tonight. And to see you all so successful and respectful and supportive of our school makes me happy. Thanks to all of you. I believe we inductees share a common thread, competition. I thrive on it. I don't like to lose. I believe that if a challenge is thrown at you, if a clock is running or if someone is keeping score, then you must do what needs to be done to win. There's no other recourse. We are not perfect people, but we can strive to be that good. It doesn't matter how good of an athlete you are. We can work harder than our opponent and have a greater will to win than our opponent. I just don't understand why we would consider any other option. Why would you want to be good and not great? Why would you want to be satisfied or complacent rather than hungry for more? Why not challenge your athletic abilities and test your inner fortitude? If you do this, the end result always will be successful and positive regardless of the outcome. I'm not a fan of the be yourself mentality. 
be better, get better. Unfortunately, this philosophy is deemed old school today. Many parents and kids don't buy into this school of thought, but I believe if you combine the pursuit for perfection, competition, with the understanding that you will fail many times along the way, that you will eventually taste success when it's ripe, and develop inner strength and confidence for life. I believe that, and I've got many people to thank for instilling that competitive nature in me throughout my life. Dad and Mom, you were the two of the hardest working people I've ever met. With four young boys, you started a family business and dedicated your lives to it. They sacrificed so much of their lives all to make a better life for our family. From Dad and Mom, I learned to prioritize my goal and to understand what's really important in life. When it came to sports, all they asked from us boys is that we played hard, played fair, and played with class. But they were also my biggest critics. To this day, I look to them for feedback on how I coach. Dad will question some of my moves, saying things like, what kind of call was that? <laughs> or where the hell did you learn that? <laughs> Whereas mom would be happy that I didn't get thrown out of a game. <laughs> you both motivate me to succeed. You've always supported us boys and now you support our children. Dad and mom, vi ringrazio e vi amo. I'm proud to be your son. Growing up with three older brothers, lessons were pounded in my head on how to play the game, how to win, and mostly how to lose. My brothers wouldn't let me win at anything. You want to beat us? Learn how to. That was the message that I believe they were sending to me. And at first, I didn't like it. I'd get mad and pout and cry while they walked away laughing. It didn't matter that they were teenagers and I was seven or eight. They pushed me to get better, to work harder, and I always accepted the challenge. My brother's influences on me helped form my athletic philosophy. I learned many things from them. I learned that you don't have to jump and scream and shout to get ready to compete. Simply stay cool, stay focused, and do your job. I learned how to outthink an opponent for that competitive edge. I learned the qualities, qualities of leadership and the importance of a strong work ethic. My brothers taught me to never back down, to keep fighting. Of course, they also used me as their punching bag or their BB gun target. <laughs> and I learned the art of a good cross face many a night in our living room. They are the ones who not only showed me the way, they made sure I never veered off. I'm 50 years old, and I still fear the wrath of my brothers. I thank you guys for being my teachers, my coaches, my trainers, and most of all, my friends. Proud to be your younger brother. I'm almost done. There were so many good athletes at IHC when I arrived there that I had to figure out where I belonged. I enjoyed playing every sport I could. I realized early that I was not going to be the biggest or the strongest athlete. I had to be faster and smarter than the rest. Every practice was a test for me because there were so many good athletes to compete against, and some are in the crowd tonight. I had plenty of motivation to compete. It all came together in my junior year with our varsity football team. We became the first team to play in the Carrier Dome. That team was loaded with talent. Mike Perkins, a quarterback. Johnny Pusha, Patsy Dola, Jake Navarro, running backs. Mike Pusha, at tight end. Bomber Cohane, a defensive back, and myself, a wide receiver. Unfortunately, our coach didn't like to pass the ball much. But when my number was called, I knew I had to make the most of it. And what an education I got in our huddles. Hey, eh, Ronnie? Brownie Pusher would get mad if he didn't get the ball in every play. Patsy believed in running the ball every play. Perk, our quarterback, would ask me, what do you want to run for a play? Do you think I had any say in that huddle? No chance. Our practices were no joke. Bomber would get so upset if I caught a pass against him in practice. He hit me harder in practice than any opponent ever did in a game. I feared Ronnie Sexton's forearm when I had to block him on outside runs. I was concerned every time I had to go over the middle for a pass with Bomber on my back, 
and Jimmy Graham waiting for me in the middle, foaming at the mouth. And this was practice. I couldn't wait to play South Jeff or General Brown. I still can't. But I get back to the huddle after watching Sock get crushed on some running play, see him reset his helmet, and hear him say, give me the ball again. That's motivation. I realized that our toughest games were our practices, and Saturday games were opportunities to take it to the bigger schools. This was the overall attitude of that period, play to win. The environment in which we played was based on school pride. The stands and sidelines were packed, and parents, my father wearing his plaid hunting coat and striped pants, <laughs> Siblings, alumni, and girlfriends wearing jerseys. School spirit was obvious in the halls of IHC with decorations, blue and white attire, Cavalier pride pins on our jackets, pep talks from nuns and priests and the lay teachers. Hold on. No player wanted to hurt his team by getting into trouble in school or in the community. We represented IHC, and the thought of embarrassing your family name, your school, and your teammates served as a fine motivator to do well. What a great and fun time it was to be an athlete at IHC. I credit the athletes I played with, the winning attitude that I embraced, and the do-your-job philosophy, the times of my athletic success during those years and beyond. I'm so fortunate to have been part of those great teams. We didn't get cocky on the field to show up an opponent. We didn't buy into that. Instead, you guys taught me to beat your opponent, shut your mouth, and never be satisfied. I believe in that philosophy and constantly reminded of that every time I see guys like Ronnie and Bomber. Because you guys were so good, you made me work hard to be mentioned along with you. Tim, Rick, Bob, Andy, we formed lifelong friendships since we met at IHC, and no one has had more influence on me when it comes to the art of competition in my adult life than you guys. At our age, and regardless of the sport, you guys play to win at any, co any cost. Rules are bent, trash talking is expected, and shame on you if you can't handle the pressure. That's what it's like when we all get together, and I absolutely love it. Adrian and my kids know how we beat each other up every time we go to get together and go on our golf trips. She knows how much you guys mean to me. You guys are the best. My wife and kids have been a huge part of my adult athletic career. Adrian used to keep the books for my Watertown athletic teams. She has joined me at handball tournaments across the state and has introduced me to the sport of tennis. Because she is currently the ping pong champion in our house, she motivates me to get better. You're nothing, Chenz. Thank you, A. Thank you for understanding my desire to compete, for encouraging me to compete, and for supporting my efforts, except boxing. No. I know. <laughs> I know. I am truly fortunate to have your blessing. And kids, your own desire to play sports motivates me. I can't let you beat me. You guys keep me young. You keep me. You are my driving force to keep me active. I thank you, Adrian, Chiara, Santino, Elena, and Vincenzo for being the pulse of my heart. Ringrazio Dio per voi ogni giorno. So as you can see, many people are responsible for my athletic success and for me standing here before you tonight. I think each, thank each, each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart for the influence you've had on my life, and I thank God for including you all in my life. Thank you, Athletic Committee, Committee, for selecting me to be included in this fantastic group of people who, at one point in their lives, represented IHA, IHC on the athletic fields, and won. I'm thankful that I wore the blue and white and humbly accept this honor. Thank you, and God bless our country, our families, our school, and all of you. Go Cavs.